Before you take to the battlefield, ready your weapon and ready your shield. Round and wide and made from boards, protect yourself from those oncoming hordes. Lauren here again, and today, to follow up on talking about swords of migration era going to Anglo-Saxon and Viking that we did in our last video, well, we featured shields, we might as well talk about shields. So today, the round shield of Saxon and Viking eras. Of course, when we say Saxon and Viking eras, there's more to it than just that. Um, remember, Viking is a job, not a people. But, we have Danes in... Britain, we have Anglo-Saxons fighting them, so we can call this a Saxon sh round shield or a Viking round shield. That's fine. We'll use that as our terminology. So I'll put the sword down for a second because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to explain what makes up the round shield. Now, it could be made from thin layers of wood, but that's really hard to do. So most likely planks and um, they're slotted together so that they're they're planed and slotted together here and I've made this one myself it's not finished and it's definitely not perfect it does need rawhide around the edge but rawhide is expensive so I haven't got to that yet I may just use some regular leather straps that I have but that's besides the point but what is a round shield well obviously it's round the boards planks go together to make up the shield then you've got a single handle. This one isn't quite historically accurate, but it's something that I could throw together myself just for training purposes, just to have. And uh, yes, there's this hole in the center. That's where you grip it. So it's called, also called a boss held shield because you hold it where the shield boss is. And uh, you might remember that from the buckler. The buckler has a shield boss. We talk about that. So can we see that this just looks like a little version of this. And in a lot of ways, that's what a buckler is. But you use it kind of differently because this is big. This is meant for the battlefield. This is meant to cover. And this is definitely a shield, 8th, 9th, 10th century. We're looking at, uh, we have examples from earlier. Anglo-Saxon will probably have a bit different shield boss. Some of the earlier ones are definitely different designed. They may flare uh, in and out a little bit. There might be a little antenna type spike with a little thing on the end of it. Sutton Who, that's what they found. Their shield boss is definitely very different from this one here. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. Looking at different angles. But yeah, boss held. Now this concept of a shield you hold with one hand in the center rather than having it strapped to your arm, this is a pretty old idea. We know the Celts and uh, German tribes and the Romans, the Roman scutum, their big rectangular shield that's curved. It's also held. It's held kind of like this with the shield coming up like that. So they ha there is a lot of history behind having a shield held in the center hand. Now it's already feeling a little bit heavy for me. It's fine, I can, I have enough muscle to get through the whole video, but there we go. So when you're using this kind of shield, one is going to be disposable. It's made out of wood, and most shields throughout history are made out of wood. Yes, there will be examples of bronze shields early on, but... Wood is the primary construction material for making a shield. So we have our wooden shield, a little heavy. You can fight with it, you can thrust with it, you can kind of strike, push, but it offers a lot of protection. Now, it's different from the buckler because if we were a buckler and you fought like this, the way we would position a buckler, well, the blows are going to glance off and up into your face. So you're going to use it a little bit different. You can have it out in front of you. And you can have your weapon at the ready, ready to peek around the side. And I'm going to move the shield and cut, similar to some of the buckler techniques where you're cutting around the buckler. But I'm also pushing with this and giving the camera a good workout for its focus. So it's very different as far as the fighting style because you're not in so close all the time. You can also look at the opposing shield. You want to hit the shield, opposing shield with yours and try and turn it. If you can turn it in, then you've got an angle to attack or you can turn it out. So when you're in close fighting, you're 
moving, making this kind of motion, trying to bind and push and control the opposing shield and then get in with your attack. So a lot of it is different from where the sword does all the work and the buckler supports it. There's going to be more work of pushing, of blocking, of maneuvering with the shield and then doing your attack to get in there. And of course sword, probably not the most common except until maybe you know, we're getting into the 10th and beginning of the 11th century. Sure, there'll probably be a lot more swords around. But early on, there'll probably be an axe. You might have a spear. And you can fight with a round shield and a spear. One second. Do -do -do, there is a spear here. You can fight overhanded. Like that. You can fight normal-handed. There we go. So, a spear and a shield you could use. You'd probably hold it a little bit close to the center. If you were using it with two hands, then you can hold it a bit further back. But one-handed. And then if your shield does get destroyed, you can cast it off. So you could just switch to the spear and you have that reach advantage. Put the spear away. Make sure it doesn't fall down. Don't fall down. But yeah, so Saxon, Viking, round shield on the continent in Europe as well. Early Middle Ages, we're going to see the kite shield come in and start to replace this. And we're going to start to see different designs on shields where it's actually strapped to the arm. And you have several points of connection. Though you can take the straps and you can still hold it like a boss grip shield. You can still hold it with one hand on the straps. But that's for another video. This was just going to be a quick look at the round shield so that we could get an idea for it. We can see its sides. You could really got a lot of protection. You're hiding behind it. You do need a strong forearm in order to use it. It's definitely going to be a lot heavier. Although this homemade one is probably a little bit thicker and heavier than it needs to be. I could definitely make a better one. And of course, our um, handle that's also used to keep all the boards to help keep them together we could have additional planking as well, but it's a little thick, so it adds to the weight. So anytime you can cut down on the weight and still maintain the strength of your shield, that's always an excellent thing to do. But again, it's big, it's made of wood with this metal box, and oh, incidentally, this metal box, look what happens. So you imagine fighting, someone cuts in, you can push, help control the opposing blade. So it's not just well, I want to hold it in the center, close to the shield, so I need a hole so my hand doesn't rub against the wood. So I'll put this metal cap over it, but it's also good for fighting. So it allows you to catch and control the opposing weapon as much as binding the opposing shield. So it's good for shield on shield contact, it's good for stopping the weapon and redirecting it, and okay, disposable. You're going to probably recycle some of the parts, like the steel boss, it's going to get dented, you'll hammer it out. Um, the steel boss is going to be made of a single piece, so it's a little tricky to make them. You're not going to make the whole thing out of steel. Oh, and important, uh, we see a lot of the reproductions in movies and stuff just wood, but usually there's a like canvas or cloth or even leather covering over top of it. By gluing on the cover, you're adding to the strength of the wood. So if you've got this glued on fabric, and someone hits it along the grain and it splits, it's helping to keep the shield together. So it's going to last a bit longer in that fight. It's not going to necessarily fall apart. Chunks might come out of it, but the whole thing isn't going to split and, and fall to pieces. So you'll still have some semblance of a shield to be able to continue fighting. So you can then paint the cloth and make all sorts of cool patterns. I've just done a quick green and gray on this, but I'll probably have a deeper green and a blue on that to match the fellowship of the sword colors that we use in our club, and then it'll look a lot more like the buckler. But again, that's the round shield. Looks like a giant buckler, or the buckler looks like a mini round shield. But again, you're gonna fight differently. This is definitely for the battlefield. Big lines, you can have the shields interlocked. You can form that shield wall. Some of the shields will be up and over. And um, big, effective, a bit heavy, strains on the arm, so. We're at the ready, we fight, 
fighting around the shield, using the shield to keep us safe, fighting into openings, pushing on the opposing shield, thrust, cut, attack. So there we go, just a brief look at this Anglo-Saxon and Viking style round shield that we see a lot in pop culture, but now we know a little bit more about how it's made and about how we use it. So thanks very much for watching. Do remember to like, subscribe, even hit the notification bell if you want to make sure you are informed when new videos come up. And I hope that you are having a great, wonderful day. And remember, life might be challenging, but get your shields up, get ready, and keep on fighting. <laughs>